All right, Shalom. Give it all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, the great millstone for teaching his truth. It's gone all around the earth. Shalom to the hopeful elect out there, right? So, through the grace of Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai, we've all made it another week, even though we be in this wicked kingdom. Nonetheless, We made it another week. And throughout this week, many of us have seen a lot of judgment come through from the Most High, right? And you got the usual wickedness from the adversary, right? From the devil, so-called white folks. Esau, Edom, who continues to go throughout the earth and act like they're so benevolent and so loved and have all the answers and have never done anything wrong, okay? And they're fighting amongst themselves and they've even got their own kind, right? Speaking against the powers that be and then on the other side of that, we see in them, what? Throw hissy fits and temper tantrums and cry and spit and spew, which is actually hilarious, right? We got to see some of that this week. And of course, on our side, for all you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you Seminole Indians out there, you better repent because the Most High is going to open up judgment like you've never seen before, I do believe, in these coming days, weeks, and months of the rest of this year. Because as the Apostle coined it, the Apostle Tahar, this is the year of the turn up, right? Of Yahweh Shai. And judgment is going to play out against. You Israelites out there who refuse to repent. Now I'll just make a little bit of mention of this, just like that young man who fell to his death from that, that ride down there in Florida. All right, there was a connection here with being in this area of Missouri, okay? And I think I mentioned it in one in the uh, one video that I did you know, uh, on that uh, situation that uh, in passing, you know, I, I know I know who his mom is because we work in separate buildings, but I, I, I've, I've talked to her before once or twice, you know, just in greeting, you know, casual stuff. But, uh, it was sent to me before I even knew anything about who it was. Uh, I went out there onto the uh, internet and uh, read up on it, you know. And though it be a tragic thing, we know that the Most High brings judgment. That's something that we know, okay? And it behooves you out there if you have not repented to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right, the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, the real Savior, okay, not no in the name of Jesus, okay, because that, that devil ain't going to help you, okay. You're subject to see something terrible happen to you or it would start within your family. We, we, you don't know. Man, the Most High is like that. Okay, and, and I'm going to get on the subject that I usually, I don't speak on it all that much, but today I think I'm going to speak on it through the spirit, and that's you, that's you careless and wayward women, okay, particularly the younger women, the old women, and when I say old, I mean beyond 30, you older women, you still got some game in you. 
okay? Your husband may be a man of the Lord, let's say, and you're trying to create a living hell for him in the house. You don't want him to teach, you don't want him to watch no videos, you don't want him to make no lessons. You want to be able to control your man. That's out of order. Now, I'll preface this and put a caveat in there as well, you know, to the sisters who are watching and are sincere and have repented. This doesn't apply to you, okay? But there may be women out there who watch videos just to, to have a laugh, okay, for entertainment purposes, because they like the way a guy speak, they like the way a brother look, so on and so forth, okay? And some of you sisters may even know in your own family some women who still like to run game, all right? There's a lot of women, as we always go into, and Lord willing, I get it in the scripture. I ain't gonna ramble too much. There's a lot of women. When it starts to really go down, you ain't gonna make it. And you're gonna be crying, and you're gonna be looking for your husband to help you. But if he be a man of the Lord and a true man of the Lord, as as we're we're trying our best. He may be beamed up in the chariot. And guess what? The fucking cell phone ain't gonna work. Okay? Because he won't have it. Now, you'll make it on your own. Or you won't. Okay? So let's get into something real quick here. Because we know that we are the special people of this planet. Right? And the Lord made it that way. Okay? And this includes you women okay but right now you women are, are just wicked as hell again I'm not I'm not talking to the sisters there's a lot of you women who are rude disrespectful unholy okay attention starved evil And you're going to have to pay for that if you don't repent. Let's go to Deuteronomy 7. I'm going to jump right in right there at uh, verse 6. And it reads, For thou art in holy people. He said people, right? The Lord said people. Written through Moses, right? So it's not just talking about the men. When you, when you see the brothers preaching, teaching, what have you, and you read, and they read the scriptures and it's talking about the children of Israel, Okay, that includes you. Okay, you're not a leader as a woman. Okay, but you still include. So what what can befall a man can befall a woman. So it's talking about the people of Israel, and that includes females. For thou art, verse 6, this is uh, Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. For thou art holy people unto the Lord, Yahweh, thy power. The Lord, Yahweh, thy power, had chosen thee to be a special people. A special people. Okay? And we're, we're doing our best in this day and age to get back to what the Lord wants us to do. You see? You can't be out here in the world continuing to do all this wickedness. You women just so loose. You're on every single uh, uh, social media uh, uh, website there he is. Shaking your ass, right? Shaking your breast, sticking out your tongue, doing all kind of manners of just, just wickedness. Okay? Then there are those who are evil towards their husband, evil towards their children, you know. But we're just going to keep it between adults, right? Like men and women. Woman giving her husband so much trouble. Talking about you Negroes, Latino, and, and, and Native and Seminole Indian women. Okay? 
Salakia for my hand, you know. But just trying to make a point. So when we're talking about the people, it includes you. Verse 6 again, for thou art in holy people unto the Lord Yahweh thy power. The Lord Yahweh thy power had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Verse 7, the Lord Yahweh did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord Yahweh loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen for the hand, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, therefore, that the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, he is power, the faithful, almighty, right, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And I'm just going to stop right there, okay? So it's covering all of us, okay? It's talking about all of us, including the women, all right? And there are special women all throughout the Bible as well who've done some things for the men of the Lord, okay? But right now in this day and age, it's more wicked women than you can shake a stick at. Let's go over to... Uh, trying to think where I want to go. Uh, let's go. Let's try. Uh, let's go to Matthew. Let's do that. Let's go to Matthew 24 because we're talking about a time, right, that was never before, okay, where you're going to see there's going to be a lot of death, a lot of destruction, and the Lord's bringing death, okay? And a lot of it is going to be you women. So let's read about a time that is here, beginning stages, and will increase as time goes on till we get to the end. All right, this is uh, Matthew 24, and I'll jump in right there, verse 19. It says, and woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, which was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Verse 22, and except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Okay? I'm going to stop right there. But here you see women are included. All right? That you better hope you're not bearing a child and all these sorts of things that women do, okay, when they're young mothers, you're not repentant and you out here worrying about the things of the world how you somewhere tricking off or you creating evil against your husband you better watch yourself because them, them days of that heavy heavy tribulation and Jacob's trouble is coming and yes it's not going to pass over you because you're a woman okay um I think pretty much that's all I wanted to say about that. About that right there. Now we're going to go on because even in the New, we go to the New Testament in the book of Timothy okay, there's instruction for women. 
see you got a lot of proud ass women. You know, I know the scriptures. I know what they say. No, you don't. Stop all the foolishness. All right. The real sisters, you know, they know what they're doing. They're doing it in the, in the right spirit, in the right frame of mind. You know, being repentant and doing all they can to help. All right. But there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of females out there who just, you off the charts. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2. We jump in right there, verse 8. Uh, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Verse 9, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. Being shamefaced, right? What is that? Basically, that's the opposite of being proud and running your fucking mouth. Now remember, forgive my forgive my language, okay, if you know that don't suit you, okay. But you gotta get the straight skinny. You gotta hear it the way it is, okay? There's a lot of women with a lot of proud mouth. And the Lord is gonna shut your mouth one day. In like manner also, verse 9 again, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broad hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Yeah, you say that you, you, you profess in the Lord, right? You claiming that you, yeah, I'm saved, oh, yeah, whatever. No, for the sisters who are really out there, who have repented, they're not causing their man no trouble, right? And they're doing good works. But for you other women out there, you're gonna put yourself, oh my goodness. You've got, you, you're in harm's way, let's say it that way. Going on to verse 11. And I'm not gonna stay on this subject all, all day, but you know, it's just on my mind because you, you see the wickedness that the women are doing in the earth. I'm talking about our people, our women, and how they, they're so damn rebellious and so against their men. Verse 11, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection but I suffer not a woman to teach in order to what? Usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And we find that even in the workplace. They put all these women in management supervisor roles. Right? And particularly, I'm talking about us, our, our women. Don't know how to act, don't know how to talk to nobody. You the boss. Right? And you want you want the men of your own your own kind to bow down to you. You talk shit to them on the workroom floor, right? You do this shit in the meeting, right? Trying to prove yourself to Esau that you the right one to be in the position. Too fucking proud. You better humble yourself down. Let's go over to uh, Second Timothy, chapter four. Now I start right there at the top, and it, and it reads. I charge thee therefore before the Most High and the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt, with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay, is that just the men? No, it's not just the men. 
Okay, correction is needed for all those that need to be corrected. It includes you women. Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You know what that's all about, that's self-explanatory, right? Got a lot of women who like certain groups because of certain reasons, not because of whether or not they're preaching the correct doctrine, but because you like the way they look, you like the way they dress, they got their shit all lined up and filled in and colored in and dyed in and Oh boy. Okay. I'll read, uh, I'll go back to the top and read straight down to verse 4, and then that'll be that on 2 uh, Timothy. Okay. 2 uh, Timothy 4 at the top again. I charge thee therefore before the Most High and the Lord Yahweh Mashiach, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be, in, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned under favors. And anytime you're talking about a, a doctrine that's strange, that's a fable as well, because they ain't telling you the truth. We're going to read something else here. Let's go to, uh, you know what, go to Isaiah. And this is Isaiah 32. Okay, this is just a show, okay, really. Show the women that are watching. That, yeah, you mentioned in there too. Talking about you women who, who causing hell and you refuse to repent and you being rebellious. This is Isaiah 32. I'm just going to jump in at verse 7. It says, The instru instruments also of the churl, which is a, a wicked-ass person, a, a man who's wicked and evil, the instruments also of the churl are evil. He devises wickedness, Salaki. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. Right? Who does that sound like? See, you so-called... Negro women, Hispanic women, Native American women, right? And even you women who may even be a speckled bird and look like the other nations. You got that attitude about you too. Why? Because you're an Israelite. You're rolling your neck and rolling your eyes. You're talking shit. You're just being a straight up complete demon. But the, the liberty devises liberal things and by liberal things shall he stand rise up ye women that are at ease hear my voice ye careless daughters give ear unto my speech all right so there's a warning for you all right because many of our women are careless and they're living at ease verse 10 many days and years shall be shall ye be troubled ye careless women for the vengeance shall fail uh, Slocky, let me go back and start that uh, verse 10 again. I said the wrong word there. Verse 10, many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats, 
for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come, upon thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy and the joyous cities, because the palaces shall be forsaken and multitudes of the city shall be left. The forts and towers shall be for dens for forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peace, peaceable habit, habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet rest places. So like your quiet resting places, when it shall hail, when it shall hail, coming down on the forest, and the city shall be low in a low place. Blessed are ye that sow besides all waters that send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. But before things get better, you careless women, you better listen to the warnings. Okay, that's all throughout the scriptures about you. Okay, and that's coming for a time. wouldn't say careless women and you women at ease if you, if you didn't exist so obviously you exist in a natural sense that is okay so there's going to come a time Okay, you better heed what's being said by the men and by this time that you're living in. News is just not for your entertainment. All right, you should be able to look at something and tell that there's there's something wrong. There's something to miss. The spirit is moving real heavy. Okay. You're supposed to be watching, as the scripture says, watch as well as pray. Oh, I know what else. Hold on. There's, you know, like I said, you know, there's a lot going on, you know, because men of the Lord, we have many enemies, okay? And an unrepentant, rebellious woman is a, and a wicked woman is an enemy. This is Ecclesiasticus out of the Apocrypha, chapter 25. I'll jump down to... Uh, verse 10 and it reads oh how great is he that findeth wisdom yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord but the love of the Lord passeth all things for illumination he that holdeth it whereto shall be likened the fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him give me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman and that's some, that's that's terrible okay right it's true it is the word of the Lord but yet when you think about it it is so terrible verse 14 and any affliction but the affliction from them that hate me and any revenge but the revenge of enemies there is no head above the head of a serpent and there is no wrath above the wrath of an enemy i had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman so you're our enemy right 
You're the worst kind of enemy. Verse 17, the wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors and when he heareth it shall sigh bitterly. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. See that? As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the age, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Right. Never shut up. Don't do nothing but cause misery. You see? Verse 21, going on. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudent, and much reproach. A wicked woman abideth the courage, abateth the courage, making a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Of the women, of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Give the water no passes, neither a wicked woman liberty to gather abroad. And that's what a lot of these women love to do, right? They want, you see them, you see them out there, right? All over social media, uh, you know, designers sending them clothes and they traveling all over the world. They in France, they in Germany, they in Miami, they go to Los Angeles, all over the place. Okay, and you having fun. You enjoying, you're enjoying life, right? Going around, sleeping around with all these different men, tricking off, getting, getting, getting money out of them. Okay. That's what a lot of you young women are doing. And that shit's going to lead straight to destruction. Verse 25, again, give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to gather abroad. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. You know, that's what a wise man would do. So anyway, that's just something that was on, you know, I guess, you know, just on my a spirit to, 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 to bring out because we're seeing all of this stuff, you know, just just in regular news, you know, you just, or you can't go on the internet or, or watch, watch, I don't watch much television, you know, I mostly just be watching videos of brothers, and, you know, then, you know, you got them pop-up boxes or this or that, a damn commercial and it's, you know, just, just, Women all over the place, unruly. You hear about some of the expenses, uh, it's like some of the experiences that many of the brothers are going through. With, it's a terrible thing, you know, to, like the scripture says, man, you'd rather live with a lion or a dragon than, than to be with a wicked woman. Okay. Oh Lord. Let's look at uh let's look at uh Ezekiel five. Uh let's see here, where I wanna go. Trying to see where I want to jump in. Just bear with me here. I'll start at verse 5. This is uh, Ezekiel 5, and I'll jump in at verse 5. Thus saith the Lord Power, This is Jerusalem, 
I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about it, around about her, and she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Therefore thus saith the Lord Power, because ye multiply more than the nations that are round about you, and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about me. Therefore thus saith the Lord Power, behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee, in the sights of the nations. And here we are in the middle of all these other nations, just thinking about today now, you know, just thinking about today. Here we are in a land, right? Just thinking about here in Babylon the Great, amongst all these other nations, and the Lord's gonna execute judgment on Israel. And a lot of you women gonna catch it. However the Most High decides to do it. Just keeping it in his perspective of today. Verse 8, therefore thus saith the Lord Power, behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee, in the sight of the nations, and I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. Okay? That says her as a people, right? As a nation. Israel, right? But it's talking about you women, you women included in that. It ain't just the men. Therefore the fathers, verse 10, therefore the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers, and I will execute judgment in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, power surely because thou hast defined, defiled my sanctuary, Slaki, with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations. Therefore, will I do, will I also diminish thee, neither shall mine eyes spare, neither will I have any pity. Verse 12, a third part of thee shall die with the pestilence and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee and a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee and I will scatter a third part into all the winds and I will draw out a sword after them thus shall my anger be accomplished and I will cause my fury to rest upon them and I will be comforted and they shall know that I the Lord Yahweh have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt and instruction and astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord Yahweh, have spoken it. When I shall send upon them, it's like you. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread, so will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and uh, pestilence and blood shall pass through thee and I will bring the sword upon thee. I the Lord have spoken. Okay. Times pass and now this is the even more wicked time. The wickedest kingdom now is, is now. Okay. And this is not just talking about the Lord saying just, just the men, 
You women are included. Okay? The wicked women, that is. Not, not, not the sisters. I have to keep saying that because somebody might watch this, you know, watch halfway through and think that I'm talking about all, all the women. I ain't talking about all the women. It goes to who it, who, it, who it goes to. If the shoe fits, then wear it. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> pretty much, that's it on that. I think I covered all I need to cover to address the wickedness of our women. Because sometimes just like going back to that, going back to that young man, you know, you never know. The Lord may be getting at, getting at his mom or something. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. You know, but nonetheless, the Lord brought his judgment on that young man. Okay. But we're going to see a lot of that because it's, it's that time now. We always pull out what? Uh, Second Peter, I believe. Judgment on the house of Israel for first begin with us. Something like that, right? First Peter, chapter four, and jump in at verse seven, and it reads, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Didn't I just say that just a little while ago? When you watching, don't be watching for, for fun, to kill some time, like you waiting on the bus, okay? You're supposed to be learning. And what you find out you know you're not supposed to be doing, you need to stop it. All right? Because how many more chances do you think you can get? Okay? Though the Lord, the Lord be long-suffering and merciful, I don't think you, I don't recommend that you play games. When you hear this truth, you need to take action. And that goes for all of us, right? We search ourselves, right? We examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith. You know, we look ourselves in the mirror, right? Asking the Lord for grace and mercy and Lord help me to, to be better, to do better, right? Help me to walk more in the spirit than, than in the flesh, you know? Lord, help me to, 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 to guide my tongue, okay? Examine yourself. I know this ain't a pleasant, you know, message for the day, okay? But nonetheless, this, this is what, what, what what's <laughs> what I'm supposed to be saying, I would imagine, okay, at this time. All right, uh, 1 Peter 4, going back to uh, verse 8. And above all things, have verbal charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards for the manifold grace of the Most High. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the Most High. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which the Most High giveth, that the Most High in all things may be glorified through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. 
but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Hamashiach, happy are ye. Right. And for the men who preach and do this work to the best of their ability, you know, you get reproached. You know, people come up against you, even the ones that said that they loved you, right? Many of us have lost, you know, brothers and sisters and cousins and aunts and uncles, and they don't speak to you no more, okay? But it tells us here in the words of the Apostle Peter to be happy, right? Verse 14, if you be reproached for the name of Hamashiach, right? Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of the Most High resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part, on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Hamashiach on this behalf, right? And those Christians are the Israelites. See? Verse 17, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be to them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You see? So it's got to start with us. We got to go through all of this stuff here on the earth at this time, right? And we're hoping and praying that the Lord will, that we're part of the elect, and that we get out of here as soon as possible, sooner rather than later. Okay? And that's for all, that's across the board. Okay, men and women, children as well. We're praying that we, we, we're spared. We're spared the judgment that's coming for this place. Let's see here. This is uh, Revelation 21, starting at the first verse, and it reads, and I, saw, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice, a great voice, Lachia, out of the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their God. Okay? We're waiting for that new heaven and new earth to appear. More willing we, we are part of that. Because we're tired of this wickedness, we're tired of the wicked people, we're tired of our wicked own, just tired. Tired of this shit, tired of these funky ass jobs, tired of these raggedy ass cars, tired of paying taxes, okay? Tired of Negroes jiving, BSing around, right? Getting tired of, of all of it. Oh, Y'all bear with me here. I don't know if this thing cut off or not. I 
think we're still going. See, tired of freaking Edomites riding around enjoying themselves. Everything's everything's about fun, fun and games, fun and games. I'm gonna read up. Cause sometimes we just need, you know, we need that we need that strength, man, from the Lord to to to, to bear it out, just just to keep going, to keep grinding it out, right? Today is Sunday, so tomorrow, what? Back to the damn slave hole. Back into the damn pit. To do some more work for the man, okay? We ready to get out of here. This Ecclesiasticus, Chapter 36. Salaki. And it reads, Have mercy on us, O Lord, power of all, and behold us. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. Right. We want the Lord to do a marvelous work and we want to be able to witness it. We want to see the fall of our enemies. We're counting on this, man. We're counting on it. Verse 4. As thou hast sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us. And let them know thee, as we have known thee, that there is no power but only thou, O, o power. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short. Right, Lord, we're tired of it. Make this time short. Get us out of here. Okay, verse eight. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire and let them perish that oppress the people. Okay? We want to see them done and done and done and out the way, right? We, they've been oppressing us for hundreds and hundreds of years. Verse 10, smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we, right? Esau, Edom, on top of the mount with his chest poked out, right? Got a big S, or in this case, a big E on his chest with his cape flying out his back, okay? Thinking that he ruled, well, he does rule the world at this time, but he doesn't think he's going to go down. Show your wonderful works, Lord, and get rid of the enemy. Verse 10, smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon Israel whom thou hast named thy firstborn. O be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Reward them that wait for thee and let thy prophets be found faithful. O Lord, hear the prayer of thy servants according to the blessing of Aaron over thy people, that all they which dwell upon the earth 
may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal power. See, and I'm gonna stop right there. We've had enough. I've had enough. And it's kind of cold today. I mean, it looks pretty, but it's, it's a little cold. So, I apologize I hadn't had any, you know, any, 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 any jokes or anything for anybody, but hey man, this is somber, man. You know, we just, we just tired of this place. We tired of the wickedness, right? You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you better repent, man, because judgment is, heavy judgment, I feel, is in the air. That it's really, it's really going to really, who knows what we're going to see this week, man. And look at all the weird, strange way people are dying, okay? Just, just, hey, man. You better be covered. You better be covered, because... I got the sense that things are really going to get shaky here. All right. I don't think I got any water. With me. Nope. I left my bottle of water, but it's all good. So anyway, we'll see uh, what other manners of strange things happen this week. Strange to the world, but not to us, right? We'll see how the Lord is going to deal with people this week. What's going to happen, all right, to push along the Lord's agenda, his agenda, his schedule, right? These people think that they're controlling it. They could never be more wrong. Right? So let us watch and pray. Let us uh, continue to check ourselves, right? And do the very best that we can in whatever situation we may find ourselves in, right? We don't know what this week holds, what tomorrow holds for any of us. It's all in the hands of the Lord, right? The how by Shem Yahushai. Okay. We're not, we're not worried. We just, we just watching and we're praying, right? And be careful of the deception of the liar, of the devil, of Esau, Edom, whether it be something that you're watching on the news with their sleight of hand, smoke a mirror, right? Or them devils on the job, or at the grocery store, wherever they may be, we got, we got our eyes on them, okay? This is, uh, I'm gonna use this uh, scripture here and close out. This Ephesians 5, And yeah, this Ephesians 5, I'll jump into verse 6. And it reads, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of the Most High upon the children of disobedience. But not ye therefore partakers, be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth, providing what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth maketh manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepeth, 
and arise from the dead, and Hamashiach shall give thee light. Verse 15, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Okay, we'll just close with that. All right, so with that, I'm going to give all praise to the Most High. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekakabash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone for teaching this truth. And it's gone all around the earth, man. I mean, brothers are everywhere. So we know that the time is at hand. It is very, very close for the return, for the return, Slaki, of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right? So with that, I'm going to close right there, tell you all, you know, Shalom, and I'll see you real soon. Shalom.